So today I'm going to be sharing how I take a finished tufted piece and finish it to completion. That means adding um, whatever backing is appropriate for the use of the piece and then making sure that it's all glued down and ready for use. There's a really great video by Tim Eads that kind of goes into what backing you should use and what types of glues you should use depending on whether you're creating a rug or a wall hanging. I'm gonna just share what I've done so far and the products that I've used to do that, but I would first recommend watching his video because it's really informative. There's a couple of different techniques that I've explored. When I finished this piece, I was kind of experimenting with backings and I had bought this pack. I bought, I bought this large blanket of non-slip rubber and tough felt on the other side. So this is essentially a, like a rug pad that could place underneath a large carpet so it doesn't slide around. I have just been cutting this up and using for backing on my rugs. It's pretty heavy. It's definitely very thick. It just feels like this gives it a really high quality finish. I think this was like $75 for the, the whole thing, which I have, have not even used half of. When I finished this piece, I was kind of experimenting. I didn't really know what I was doing. I ended up cutting the tufting cloth pretty close to the edge of my rug, which I don't recommend. I glued down this backing piece and just the nature of how I did this rug, it required that I sew along the edges. I hand stitched all of this, which you can definitely tell, but it took hours. Tim Eads recommends trying to find a rug manufacturer in your area who you can pay to do binding and finishing. I have yet to look into that. So yes, I no longer hand stitch to finish my rugs. What I have done as an alternative is what I call a waterfall edge. This is what I'm going to be sharing with you today, this technique, because I think it it's pretty easy and doesn't require a ton of extra resources. This is what I call a waterfall edge, where essentially the edge of the rug kind of wraps that, that hard edge so that you don't see it on the sides of the rug. But when the rug lies flat like this, you just see rug on the edge. All you need is a thick rubber backing and glue. Okay. All of that being said, I have a large frame that I need to cut all the pieces out of today and get to finishing them. So here is the back of my finished rug. Now you're probably wondering why it looks so nasty and that is because I've covered each piece with a generous amount of glue and the glue that I used here is a Roberts carpet adhesive. I got this adhesive at Home Depot. It's pretty affordable and it actually does the job pretty well. Tim Eads recommends using this adhesive, which I actually just purchased, and I'm gonna be trying that out. It's definitely a lot more expensive. So I think if you're in a pinch and trying to be cost conscious, then this one will do just fine. You'll notice that it's a bit tacky, which I actually kind of like because it makes gluing the backing on a little bit easier. This is the front of the frame, much more beautiful. As you can see, there's some strings that need to be trimmed, some more finishing that needs to take place, which I will do after I cut them out and after I back them. I'll often do some finishing before I glue just pulling some little pieces out that don't belong, doing a little bit of trimming before I glue everything down in place. Here's my dog. His name is George. Now, here I am cutting each piece out of the frame. 
to do this, you want to make sure you're leaving a minimum of one inch around each piece, but it doesn't hurt to have a little bit more. If you have a large frame, this can be a little bit tricky just because the carpets are pretty heavy. If you're using the adhesive that I used here, you have to be a little bit careful because like I said, the back is still sticky, so you don't want to stack them on top of each other. Here we are, ready to make this nasty looking carpet. Beautiful. The key to the waterfall edge is this step. What I do is I go around the edge and I fold in the tufting fabric so that it kind of makes a little bit of a lip around the edge. This is why I like the fact that this adhesive remains sticky because I can kind of press the fabric into the sticky glue and it stays pretty well. So here I am just fixing all the corners to make a nice clean edge. I like to fold them like this so that it looks really clean. As you can see around the edge, there's this lip that is what's going to create that waterfall edge so the backing can kind of tuck into it. Now I'm going through and measuring to make sure that I cut my backing correctly. This backing material is a little bit difficult to handle because it's big and bulky, but I'm just going through and measuring out the same width as the rug from each lip edge to the other because you want it to be slightly smaller than the entire width so it fits nicely into that space that we created. Now I'm just cutting along the lines I made and I've got the perfect size for the rug. Now I'm going through with this Roberts Multi-Bond Spray. This is a web-like spray adhesive that is really good when you spray both sides. The web of the adhesive kind of sticks to one another, so it makes it a really great product for this. So I'm just making sure to spray both sides and trying not to get any adhesive on the yarn. Now I am tucking this backing into the space that we created while trying to make sure that the yarn doesn't get tucked underneath the backing. We really want to make sure that all of that yarn is flowing over that raw edge of the backing and that no yarn is being stuck underneath that edge. So now I'm just pressing it down nice and good. And this adhesive is really strong. As you can see, the edge looks nice and finished. Now all that I have left to do is going through and reinforcing the edges. It's pretty hard to get the spray adhesive around the edges, so I just go through with hot glue, or sometimes I've also used fabric glue to make sure it's nice and secure. Now for trimming. Trimming is a really important step in my opinion. I think it's what takes a good rug and turns it into a great rug if you have a cut pile machine. As you can see, there's a huge difference between this corner where the S is and the rest of the rug. And here is the final rug. This was a commission and he was very pleased with it. Real quick, I wanted to show you this process for a different shape. 
this is a half circle and I went around and did the same tucking method for the edge so that it creates a nice little boat for the backing to sit in and I roughly cut the backing to the rug size but now I'm gonna go in and trim it to the exact size that I need it to be so I'm using that edge to guide me and just gradually trimming away until it fits perfectly into that space we created I'm using the same spray spraying it all down on both sides Now I am tucking it into its little bed where it will live forever, making sure none of the yarn is going to be hiding underneath that edge, tucking all the yarn around it so we get a nice beautiful waterfall edge. Again I'm going through and trimming. Now you'll see I'm wearing some wrist support, which I highly recommend. Trimming is physically exhausting on the hand muscles. I am looking into purchasing some wool shears so that I don't have to do this manually. It honestly hurts after a while, but it's so worth it. It really transforms the rug. So here is the final result. I personally love this approach with the waterfall edge because not only do they look really great, but this backing also gives the rugs a nice weight to them and they're also non-slip. I'm going to be exploring some other backing methods and will keep you posted on how those go. But in the meantime, feel free to subscribe for some more tufting content. Good luck on your rug projects and your tufting endeavors, and I'll talk to you soon.